Okay, assalamu alaikum and good morning. So we will uh, continue what we left uh, on this slide yesterday. So before I will move further, so uh, we can uh, recap the last night what we were discussing. So basically, uh, this is very comprehensive slide and uh, which is applicable for uh, the whole oil and gas uh, field. Uh, those are working in oil and gas industry, particularly the design and construction and operation of oil and gas development. So uh, as we can say the life cycle uh, of the oil and gas field. So there are five yesterday in detail the first stage is discovery right so in discovery uh, we have to do the seismic survey when the block is being assigned to the group or consortium of the companies right like as i have given for example angsi uh, in malaysia so there are uh, various platforms right so in that uh, the, each of the government in their uh, uh, land or uh, sea area, they would like to know what are the treasures which are hidden there, right? And uh, as the oil and gas is the one of the basic requirement for the energy, right? Uh, so uh, that is the discovery, and as we have seen that. Uh, in this discovery, the basic survey like seismic right, surveys are being given, right? And after that, uh, uh, when seismic survey shows that uh, there is a tentative location of the uh, uh, reservoir, then we have to go uh, further by, by drilling the well. And we have to study the characteristics. So the second stage is the appraisal. You need to say, uh, in appraisal, we have to uh, know this answer, right? Because appraisal means that it is almost confirmed that the reserves are there. And what we say, the recoverable reserve, which means that the reserve which we can tap, right? Which we can pump today. So we have to make and estimate the feasibility, right? Uh, what is the reservoir or number of reservoir size, right? Uh, how many, how much oil and gas are there? How much oil and gas could be recovered every day? What technology, right? So in general, we would like to know the structure of reservoir, connectivity, of reservoir and the reserve. And for that, uh, we have to go the detail study where we have to study the geology of the structure, where we have to through the drill well, exploratory well, right? As we have yesterday uh, discussed four categories of well, right? So for the exploratory well, because exploratory word is showing the well is dig. To, to get the information, to, to collect the knowledge, right? So what knowledge uh, we have to get uh, most important, the structure of the reservoir, what is uh, its uh, microstructure, the characteristics of the rock, what are the properties of the rock, and we also get some sample of the fluid, right, uh, because what is the type of oil, right? What are the density or what is the petrographic properties of the oil, right? How can uh, we uh, drive, right, the oil? How can we pump the oil? So these are the pre, is what you say, the pre-production studies, right? So uh, that, uh, and Uh, layout and the uh, injection well, right? 
such injection as we say uh, there are uh, we have to pump if you can see over here this is the reservoir and we can say uh, this this these are uh, let's assume six well these are the production well so we have to look to, to mobilize oil or gas so where will be how many injection well so for example if i can say let's say you decide looking at the cross section right here here and here three injection well right? this is the cross section of the oil and we think that there is oil right so this uh, is the injection well so which is pushing the oil and this well production well so and uh, one side injection well is this so injection well is pushing the oil and oil can be uh, lift up right and maybe from so so <laughs> this is the study based on that <coughs> we have to do <coughs> what type of injection fluid to be used and all So uh, as it is uh, showing, <clears throat> depending on to the size area of the field, so it may take one. Uh, uh, production and once uh, appraisal because appraisal will solve uh, various things, how much investment to go. structure and all you have to decide based on that then after this appraisal uh, the field development right the uh, uh, production well right because just now we have to drill the production well we are testing meaning to Right, online uh, reservoir model updating and fine tuning. Right, what we have developed, uh, putting the flow line because now barrel of oil from this reservoir, so that uh, and surface facilities like uh, we have come up to the type of. Uh, product So the separator, so separating unit, right? Uh, produce and injections, right? So these are the compressor, pump station, main. So, uh, this is also, uh, it may take uh, one to five years. And since sometimes we can uh, go, uh, let's say the full field development might take five years big field right but those well have been completed because to work on to the economy is the uh, production meaning to say if we have to go for 20 wells so we will not wait that all 20 well will be drilled basic facilities on the surface again we will be improving but uh, when we would be able that uh, 10 percent or 20 on right and then our production starts uh, which is depending on to the characteristics so the product beginning right uh, uh, based on the technology uh, understanding uh, we consider okay uh, this oil but once we reach to 20 years uh, and by that time technology have been matured 
न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी के लुक द सीनैरियो ऑफ द शेलो वाटर स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ मलेशियन राइट एज यूजली मोस्ट ऑफ द प्लेटफॉर्म वेन दे वर्क so uh, it was understanding that based on that capability the the oil could be tapped for 20 years but reaching to 40 years of life right <clears throat> as the advancement and technologies have been done so that is why uh, a present experience so 10 to 50 year as yesterday i was telling you right uh, in the reservoir whatever right so recovery factor as uh, in 20 50 years ago it was 20 25% now percent oil is there right last 100 years or so whatever oil we have tapped right from the reservoir <clears throat> after 100 years maybe now the technologies are being advancing so there is also uh, this opportunity for us the leftover Any time, so maybe in future uh, the the life could be extended to hundred years, right? Because what uh, all unrecovered, and then once uh, we will based on the hundred percent recoverable oil and gas, we will tap. So we. Uh, as it is we have because there is environmental issues right so we have to follow up and it also incur and decommissioning and this is more or less a new field particularly in southeast asia because now uh, some of Uh, end of life, right? So, like in Southeast Asia, so uh, more expertise is uh, required in on the decommissioning, complying to the uh, environmental regulations, and so on and so forth, right? So this is. Well, right uh, job scope or what asset manager right this is the main those if you are uh, engaged in oil and gas industry so you would be involved in any of uh, that right Now particularly uh, like for example area and again it required a proper it is uh, for all those things right it, these are the mega projects of so project management is one of patronas the major role of patronas is project management right because many technical roles are being done by the concern in project management so which is uh, in a way which is the asset management right so uh, these are the understanding so uh, yeah i thought i did not uh, press for recording okay so i think so when uh, we step when we say we are doing we are designing we come to when we have taken the design 
to again uh, before going to the uh, design we have to do the uh, initial design and uh, in oil and gas industry or many in place refinery or any chemical plant so the initial because it is the design which is combination of processes and the stage of design is the front end uh, loading process of front end engineering right uh, right so front uh, of the front end engineering uh, should be considered field development practice that allow the optimum allocation to look the uh, big picture as i can say the big picture of the overall field development right uh, uh, if i can here uh, like this right so the big picture uh, which means that uh, this is the well location and this uh, this decision so riser size uh, host size so we will are taking the me mega decision right if we take in that allow optimum allocation of capital and human resources reduce the uncertainties of key information and plan decision right <clears throat> because uh, this is the major thing right so you have to take the right decision particularly in the field for example let's say uh, this is your field right uh, this is the reservoir condition and this over there in the sea right this is your field so one reservoir here one reservoir here one reservoir here and this is your block right so the most important thing you have to choose so where should be the best location of your host platform right or you are going two types of platform for example let's say uh, if your oil uh, well or your well locations are uh, mostly some wells are here but most of the wells are here for example as location uh, one two well here some wells are here some wells are here right now uh, you this is your well layout again this based on the characteristics of the uh, reservoir so this you have done the well layout in the field development right now you think uh, where will be your uh, let's say post so if i can say uh, let's assume one of the possibility we can say that uh, there will be this uh, you can get if i can say one uh, at over here spar or semi summer spar right i can choose spar platform over here right and in spar because right over there i can have the well head right of this area right i can have the well head on the spar and it is going like this right and even a sub c well head here sub c well head here i can connect to this spot right now i can have one fpso because i need a big field i can put one fpso over here so it can connect this right 
uh, far end and there will be storage and there will be processing right that might be and if i say, say that will be because processing as i said if you can do the processing separation full processing and this fpso you can store two two million barrel of oil and uh, you can store and uh, you are uh, sending exporting the oil because all the 20 30 percent uh, unwanted thing when then you have separated over here so meaning to say by doing so uh, that uh, you consider that it is the uh, optimum allocation by doing so and you can say this uh, site development will incur uh, $700,000 or $1 billion US dollar. But uh, that you can say, right, that very break even period is three years or five years for this field. So that might be a, a, a possible solution. So that you can, because various combinations. So before going the detail engineering design, we have to do and we need the uh, good expertise, right? Right. So the front end loading methodology, methodology. The first one, the uh, pre-feasibility stage, right? Pre-feasibility meaning to say where we are a discovery. Uh, 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 whether it will be good, the uh, the feasibility stage and the basic engineering and development, right? So in feasibility, uh, so like uh, it is being uh, given over here, brief feasibility stage, uh, which is planned for resource. Define roles, define success criteria, uh, define models and scope, right? That in the pre feasibility stage, right? So, feasibility one visualization, identify opportunities and scenarios, right? This is just now I have. 30 percent well will be subsea uh, which uh, which will be factories and 60 percent will be uh, dry tree for example and identify quick wins right because as again right uh, the timeline is also important as the right so our objective are then uh, in feasibility to wear concept right so here uh, mostly the desktop is study then concept quantify economy okay. uh, because people are looking right what are the geopolitics right like for example nowadays if you are working so there are uh, two A much influence onto the oil economy. The one conflict which is uh, building in countries uh, are aligning, right? Uh, in Israel conditions, right? So that is uh, the if uh, uh, we can look uh, at so that is one of the most influencing right because uh, this is not only the small but it is uh, going further prolonged and uh, the countries like iran middle east us uh, china or russia all these players right will engage in Is, could go anywhere, right? 
then the so uh, the at the moment with this scenario planner combination in that right uh, not as of today's so they can say for example if uh, this is for the time being settled but next 10 years or next 15 years right where what will be the worst can go over the strategies right how quick where we can start right uh, because the most important thing where is my investment and how quick I break even my investment. So that is the profit, right? At least you can recover your uh, investment. That is the first thing to the oil plane. Second, a uh, big conflict as the Afghanistan uh, area. and uh, the china is an emerging so that can also bring another kind of conflict right and even uh, if you can not to be ruled out right because uh, let's say if those two conflicts settle so uh, america uh, and uh, allies are also They have to gather, they would like to, uh, to have some kind of interest in South China Sea uh, against China, right? So uh, this an oil economy, this will also be considered in developing, particularly if, if any new field is the South China Sea. politics will come into south china sea so that will also world oil politics as well as the oil business uh, of south china the risk which uh, and the quick win that will be studied right so quantify economics so all these scenarios right So after, uh, because uh, after the consideration, right, the good economists, they concede, they make the worst model, and, right? So then they will go. So, so if the worst model uh, is not being, right, the worst model is not, uh, uh, you did something uh, that within 10 years some conflicts will come in south china sea and south china sea will become most more peaceful than model based on worst scenario and it is peaceful so and based on that you did your feasibility and design Uh, situation is again reverse right so uh, as i say uh, so is it feasible after based on that uh, we have to find out is the is it the best scenario right because not the design the detailed design is later design investment so that is the scenario so now people are uh, calling scenario planning model right so is, is it uh, the best? then you are uh, coming to basic engineering right where basic engineering operation plan risk plan best so, uh, how many compressor to be used, right? Uh, so uh, what is the layout of platform? Uh, where will be uh, this kind of uh, basic engineering, right? And after that, once you will do, 
then you will go to retail engineering and execution, right? You will do the design of uh, uh, truss, design of beam, design of uh, compressor, so on. Because now you will be uh, on installed there and the planning. So the front end engineering is within this, right? So once it is being done. There, right? So as we can say that uh, <clears throat> uh, here, the cost estimation, right? Here, uh, it is general because many things uh, are not clear. So when you are uh, doing scenario planning at this So you can say it would be 150 mil, 70 million to 150 million. So that would be the gap in between. Once you are doing because uh, this FEL2, right? So because pre in this scenario, so your estimates will be. Uh, Here, whatever your estimate, it could be the final estimate could be 125 million to 85 million, right? Front end engineering design, right? This is all loading. This is when you will do the third FEL. So uh, the uh, margin. 15% to 10%. So that is the best scenario you are choosing, right? Because uh, that is within your uh, sustainable capacity. You will be reaching there, right? So this is uh, the way what we have to do. And like a set operator like if you are working in, in uh, Petronas Chari Gali so you are in, in project planning uh, on the uh, any of this FEL1 FEL2 or FEL3 right mostly engineers maybe FEL3 right So a big group is working in, even in Petronas, Shell, and so on and so forth. So uh, because again, an overview. <coughs> so uh, there are uh, various things like planning To in that we the purpose is to define an optimum reservoir depletion and compatible <coughs> facility. Meaning to say, you cannot suck uh, every oil, every drop of oil uh, in a day, right? Uh, so you have to roll. Uh, time frame, right? So you can see looking at the reservoir conditions, right? Uh, so uh, that is mostly uh, what would be the better? What is the rate of depletion monthly, daily? What, and you can, uh, based on that, you can come out what. Meaning to say, uh, you can vary between, for example, 10,000 to 12,000 barrel of oil per day with this reservoir. So you are targeting 
10 to 12,000. So 12,000, so your resource allocation will be based on that, right? with the rate of pumping and you can because in the future if you you are not conceiving become 20,000 barrel but when that stage will come so you can extend the life of your reservoir you can extend the facilities for the future increase right because you have to do at present scenario what is the uh, depletion that you can so it occurs in early project phase when reservoir information is limited and uncertainty of key decision variable is high right Right in field development plan, right uh, or FEL one and FEL two, right where because you will start with that. So this is like uh, there are. Uh, this is an integrated model, right? Just now uh, I was telling you, so you can suggest this is your. right and these are some risers right so as you can uh, uh, this is your well layout right which you have to decide for this right in scenario right so so what is your decisions coming so this your decisions over here what is the your decision diameter of export pipeline which you are sending right the riser sizes right so number of well uh, layout of the well right which you will be so at this side these are your, your decision and because you have to Right? So, as uh, the most important thing, oil and gas prices, which will again affect your right? uh, age until uh, last year. So, the 2008 scenario when 2008 recessions came. made a big profit good profit right when uh, if you remember 2008 or 9 oil pricing uh, were touching to 200 increasing right so uh, in that scenario if during that time you 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 have done this investment so into We can break even, but the second uh, uh, dip come when oil prices went down in 2015. Went down to uh, below thirty dollar a barrel, right? So uh, that was the uh, uh, other way around, right? So. uncertainties were different right so their oil companies have come up to new financial model right and then in between steady pricing right 68 70 so i think from 2017 until early 2020 they were running then Russia Saudi conflict oil prices last year went down, but now quickly they are recovering. So these are the is the oil pricing, right? Oil and gas pricing 
in making your decision right so this is what the working diagram right and other uh, uncertainties reservoir volume right drilling rig right rates which are also recoverable uh, resources right because plus minus 50% at this right so based on so that uh, we have some economics studies were done net present value and uh, net uh, return of capital this is uh, capital then uh, then result to optimize so sometimes right we can go in stages right it is a multidiscipline and in general right uh, these these studies are being controlled by the oil economist right over here all definitely there are engineers and scientists role but a major input of final decision are being taken by the economist and Uh, finance people i think if you can look in oil and gas industries worldwide or major oil companies right so most of them are uh, with finance and economics background look right we are trained for engineering but uh, financial politics and economic politics right the share market where will it go insurance pricing and all in the modeling so these people are the experts right because the ultimate right so this is one of the Uh, example of the scenario planning for field development right so uh, whenever this study that i ability study or appraisal so you have to work on to various scenario right various but if model right so with that that under the worst scenario best uh, capital gain will be a uh, given so usually uh, we have to go uh, just an overview more you can so sometimes uh, it's a early planning create project is created in the phase and select phase which involve developing a robust reservoir model so again on that basis this is data right this data is not uh, you can say uh, it is indirect measurements right so again you scientists right so those are guru in reading the you have the reservoir seismic data a lot of peaks are there thousands of data of expertise right for me and you we do but there are some gurus right so because every reservoir is so you cannot sir Uh, or data is stochastic right uh, which the data or the seismic result uh, the peaks and variations are a direct correlation or linear right but those peaks uh, some uh, experts based on the 
right? So, so that's why the most important challenge, right, in early planning is developing a robust reservoir model and depleting because uh, your business is depending on that, right? And for that, uh, you have to have, and particularly geoscientists or and again the flow assurance people and so on and so forth uh, multidisciplinary thing then optimizing right so it is not that you because as many well you will go right so uh, your investment will be higher is if you can get uh, 20,000 barrel of oil per day with 20 production well, right? But another solution, you will be having 30 well head, right? So you have main power and so on and management, risers, all those things, right? So again, to you in this way, well layout. So it is not that you will do. So uh, looking again, so uh, coming to this point, model, right? So in this, it because it is the matter of uh, the flow, right? So we are at which point, right? You. higher right it is just like on our body so at uh, some point uh, where uh, some uh, so somewhere uh, the blood will come at slow rate right but veins or somewhere uh, so when we choke the vein so the as very fast rate, right? So same thing, we have to touch the veins of the reservoir. So, and we choke the... Yes, uh, so then on to that, you will dig the well, production well over there. So you can get higher... one well but again as i said there isn't any hard and fast tool right so again with, uh, you need expertise in that you see somewhere like in uh, in the world there are some gurus they are very very old 70 80 years old right gurus they they can They can come and they can sometimes advise, right? So this is one of the, uh, uh, because uh, under the worst scenario you can do, right? Because oil pricing are going over, up and down, particularly down, but your operational cost is also low, right? So with that, the well layout, right? And minimizing well performance uncertainties. So again, uh, the uh, lenses, uh, the, the right type of casing, the, the pumping, uh, uh, blowout prevention, so on and so forth. Selecting the right surface facilities plan. Just now, as I was telling you, sometimes you are going combination, right? Uh, this this uh, facilities, right? So these are in early, right? So that is your what mental hypothetical design, right? You, And 
because we are talking about a big area, right? Uh, for example, 50 kilometer by 2000 square kilometer area field, big field particularly. So, like uh, over here, uh, this is some type of graph is being shown, right? And then, value uh, of the field, right? This is the value of the field, and these are the processes, right? Which is affecting, right? Where uh, the value will be. investment right the so value will be low right so there are the two kind of decision right from right to operation so this creating value selecting the right project right so here uh, these are the key milestone So this is number one, which is red. Number two, sanctions, uh, where uh, the uh, uh, type of field. Right? Then, so these are the three key uh, decision milestone. And uh, you can get to, uh, to to reduce reservoir uncertainties, right? But uh, you may start with poor definition, right? Uh, some this, right? So in this stage, uh, you can say the black is your poor definition. So this you can do like this. Because sometimes you are using the data of nearby field and you made your definition. But here, before going to definition, you reduce the reservoir. So you did uh, much more, right? You have studied with your model very detailed, right? Because here you started with. you are putting this so some initial cost right will be incurred but this you have done so as if it is going like and you can come up to the good definition so it will suddenly because you reduce the so it will bring over here the value Again, sometimes uh, uh, it has happened because this is another uh, and from here. So when you realize is the creating value, selecting the right project, right? So this, these are the two things. Here you can select the right project. It, this is another in your execution, right? So, for example, it, there is also possibility this team uh, select the right project, right? So that is, but you did not uh, do the project right, so that is your poor execution. Steady state or you can even increase. There is also possibility some size, right? Because uh, this is also the right, but at least it can be maintained because you have come up to this definition, the worst scenario, and you can say okay, it's time, but you can make the project failure by poor execution plan, but you can make at least so the spend 
in this phase is generally a small percentage of total development spend but provide substantial add, added value to the uh, like you are in asset management and these models are good for project management team right which is uh, Only valid for oil and gas industry, right? So this acquire and discovery, these models you can also translate to automotive industry, right? With the chain of uh, of discovery to be changed to this market, blah blah blah. the project managers or uh, uh, the, the decision makers can follow right so this is the early planning plan that's why one to three years are the times where you can do so the project phase This one appraise which objective, right? In this, so for phase one appraise phase. So if what is the uh, uh, because these are the uh, so uh, you, where you have to reconcile whether you have achieved the objective. So. The main objective of the appraisal of the opportunity and alignment uh, with business strategies, right? Because as we say, it is not necessary to go to that, right? But it is that. The objective is that for this study appraisal phase, that uh, whether right, at which you are doing appraisal of this field and how it could be aligned with the business strategy of the company. Right, so look of the company. Right, so based on that, the <clears throat> decisions are taken on to, to those bases and is taken and the uh, company or business strategies are aligned with the with the study so generate and select the preferred development plan right as uh, in we can read this with the previous two slides right uh, then define, select, define, finalize scope, cost schedule, execute one billion or one point five billion, right? And execute, design, fabricate, install, commission, project, and operate, start up, operate, maintain, asset to maximum. Here, uh, the asset management is the most important thing for the successful. So, uh, as uh, uh, these are field development, front end loading, execution, and optimized performance. So, take right. So, uh, this is the uh, uh, five to seven years timeline. So this is the capital expenditure. And as we say, this is the milestone, which is the stage case. Decision to proceed, right? Yes or no, right? You will be presenting to the top. These are the, although, a uh, very comprehensive slides, although 
what I have explained here. You can also read much more. As I said, uh, I'm the jack in this knowledge. I'm not the expert, right? But, but uh, based on my even experience and understanding, right? So uh, again, uh, at, I, in the exam or test, I always give uh, one uh, or two comprehensive questions on the field development planning and uh, justify. So I give this, uh, uh, this is the location of reservoir just now, whatever for last one hour I'm discussing. So just you can giving some either field or you are appraisal decision so something could be asked and uh, these three four slides are the background right our activities yesterday so that is the gist of that which could be asked right because uh, there will be Purpose is not that uh, uh, there will be the answer, right? That is your hypothetical solution. And the purpose is that uh, uh, because of ability and understanding, right? For project running and planning. So that you can also reflect into the test, right? If you can see. Although not very directly, it is looks very specific to oil and gas. But to me, I love this subject because it is not only these concepts can be applicable to any industry, and it is very comprehensive subject, and that can make a. decision making right so i like these subjects very much right so planning in a collaborative process right as uh, the collaborative which means that okay field right so there are three major segments business as i said the major chunk uh, since beginning i'm telling you so the business people, all the oil economics and planning is working. It is business management. For example, uh, if last time, uh, if I uh, recall the uh, the organization, Chari Gali is the execution of wing of the Petronas. But the main decision maker uh, was uh, uh, petroleum management. People were not uh, sitting, uh, they were not the field people. They were sitting into the Twin Tower, the uh, PMU. Uh, I'm not sure anyone. Or uh, same thing would be. So, but these people, Right, the PMU was, you can say, under the umbrella after the Tansri. The this is the business unit, right? They are looking dollar and cent, right? They are looking the uh, uh, the the growth of dollar and so that include business management, right? PMU partners, right? Uh, where, uh, for example, as high expense teachers uh, invest and earn and pay, right? Basically, uh, any project, although Petronas owned by government, but private public funding, government do not give the money. 
to patron us. Okay, this is the block. Uh, you do the survey, we will give you this money. Right? Which we are leasing you. Right? So you have to invest money. Right? Uh, it is your luck. And you earn money. And once you earn money, meaning to Right. So uh, in that, because uh, it is again the capital, so the partnering, right, JVs. So for example, three percent. So they are equally. So there is also business interest. So in making decisions, so you have to consider that risk safety economy. So that will be over here. So they will be looking each of these department, right? So they will be looking the their business, right? They will be looking patronage reputation or shell reputation or uh, where uh, the status of the these people. Uh, will be so Petronas uh, uh, Global 500 status should be improved, right? Now, uh, this will be the reservoir oil which will be coming, right? So, there will be geoscientists and petroleum engineers and other, so like geophysicists, so is petroleum reservoir engineers. So this is the second segment, and so you can say uh, uh, all three are more or less same. Here are pure engineering surface, right? So engineering surface, it is part of engineering, marine riser, top site facilities, operation, installation, and project management and execution. Right. So this is the the key role profile of the column. This I diagram are explained, right? So uh, it involves continuous interaction between key elements, right? So the one because uh, these people are mostly non-technical, but these people and these people are technical. So they are guideline and feedback, right? And these people are, uh, for example, right? So the host, many, so you are looking the corrosion, uh, the inspection, right? But oil economics and oil politics, maybe by hearing my knowledge, your knowledge like that. But the expertise will be over here, right? So, but you, your feedback uh, will, if there will be close contact collaboration, so that can make your uh, decision optimum, optimize decision, right? So the process require continuous and effective collaboration and alignment between reservoir, well construction, surface facility. Is no superiority, right? Uh, these people should not consider that uh, they are superior to them. These people should not consider that they are engineer. They are sitting. I am the one who is stepping the oil. Or these people should consider. So there should be a well alignment because everybody is the part and the effective collaboration that can make the uh, field or project successful right so this is the role profile which is b so again the whole scenario planning uh, it can be this also be uh, designed right and of course uh, there will be uh, vps or senior vps and overall the tansiri is b under that or the ceo of the company Uh, this is uh, showing 
the influence of the cost typical project cost distribution relative level of influence of the cost right as you can see uh, at this stage right in the beginning at this stage right the uh, typical project cost will be roughly 3% right but this 3% right low if it is 1 billion dollar project right so 3% 3, 3 million or 30 million sir right under yeah uh, because 100 million is 10% 30 million right so roughly 30 million will be invested over here right but relative level of influence but its influence will be highest right this influence will be highest right it can make your project as i have given you poor execution or rough if you can read this with this right at this stage right so this is the influence what we were talking over here right and this is the influence at this stage right so the influence level with good and bad definition is very big but here good and poor execution influence level. influence is there but influence is less compared to that and when you are uh, uh, going up and engineering 10% then uh, uh, production right completion uh, so this is the uh, cost right so this is the set execution so these are the uh, cost uh, distribution at different stage right So proper planning uh, is critical. So it's that's why I say visibility. Uh, I think uh, these are uh, just some repeating. So identify alternative, right? Not single solution as in the beginning. Determine technical feasibility. Technical. So two type of feasibility technically is viable. Screen again, alternatives are most important. Right? So, this is mega, like the uh, overall field development is here in the concept, right? And uh, feed defined development concept, design basis, cost, schedule, execution plan. So, like here, you will be apply the prop engineering. Uh, 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 design procurement uh, construction right uh, detailed design uh, construction installation and uh, uh, use so uh, these are the stages so in this uh, what is going planning for success feasibility phase here right assessing does the technology exist this is the most important thing right whatever you are talking you are talking but technology you can uh, working to that so here can it be built to the required size or there will be uh, the tech you can design on paper but uh, none of the uh, warehouse shipyard has capability to build this. Can it be installed? Do the risks appear manageable? Right. So these are the questions. The big question. Right. Uh, so again, uh, we can uh, speak a lot, but I think self-explanatory. So in concept selection, so again, which concept will have the highest net present value, right? 
constructability and scalability issues. So here you have to perceive the issues right, in construction. Where uh, for that you have to have uh, engineering data like what are the mat ocean conditions, right? Particularly rough sea, which are the best time? What should be the navigational route, right? For example, you have to select your project is in. Uh, 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 MMHE. So, for example, the fabrication. So, for example, the component weight is is uh, fifty. It can take the the component from MMHE to the project site. If there is a barge, whether the navigational route right can can be handled right because if whether you are getting a ten meter draft or five meter draft, whatever required and route right. So uh, these are the question right. Installability. What are the issues in construction? And transportation first of all kind issues that is uh, this kind of issues if you are foreseen before in any project or literature perceive these kind of issues right for example covid 19 right so in covid 19 uh, that uh, 50 in shift work from home right 50 percent staff is there so this is a kind of new issues right and on top of that the psychological effects onto the worker right for safety and all definitely it will affect the progress and performance issues right so like many companies like uh, like uh, last year uh, this december 2020 and amir he did uh, this uh, industrial based project he was working uh, he's working in kanchana sapura so you uh, uh, this uh, the performance or the productivity of the worker right uh, so a good study so he got the real life data right uh, on to that right he did this project with me right so this is what we say uh, first of a kind issues right because no other studies conditions right uh, uh, which uh, uh, we have the the seabed condition it is a mobile seabed sedimentations are there right it's an issue right and so on and so forth so next like you know, the the hurricane is the issues right for that Concept is depending on to that, right? Potential contracting constraint, right? Uh, again, because uh, it is also important that cannot take any number of jobs, right? Based on the workshop, for example, Sapura Kanchana. At the moment, they can handle one. Because uh, it is talking that uh, how much many tons of steel plates, fabrication, welding, and all. Well, this is the busy time, right? Mm -hmm. So, in your vicinity, you cannot have any uh, workshop, right, or uh, shipyard. Or that. 
sometimes you have to make you will see right many of the projects of uh, of uh, texas they were fabricated in italy float out to the texas which take 40 days but uh, again they they were uh, consider economics or south korean shipyards they are fabricating for european or south african project right so uh, these and one of that because if you are choosing so the navigational route the draft Sometimes you can have you have a spar, for example, and you can uh, join close to the project site. Right? So this is the checklist. Uh, in, in the project specification stage, define the strife of fabrication friendly design. Uh, right look uh, so when you are designing so the collaboration with fabricator right so fabricator must be in place is try for an installation friendly design plan right let's say if you are completing that is hurricane period so what is your mitigation plan develop uh, this is most important thing cash flow and procurement flow right because uh, you are talking uh, let's say that uh, you have to do uh, mmhe so the steel plate nippon steel or uh, delta steel or blah so reliability of the design it is recommended from same batch or from same factory so whether in this time frame 50000 ton or 70000 ton of steel plates or steel element right uh, to that so the, those are uh, their mitigation plan because if let's say 50% uh, after that something could happen to the supplier right and scenario which you, we have to look right so these points are the bigger points where uh, you will uh, be looking you are uh, doing your best use right but if or if but scenario develop manageable contracting study strategy again develop a realistic cost estimate stage 15 percent to 10 percent right so that should be and once you are doing execution reflect plan inadequate planning lead to serious problem right and recovery is expensive right so this we can uh, look so uh, the bit engineering right uh, this is uh, uh, was uh, project management those slides and so let me finish this chapter then we can take some break right man ever floating system selection factors so uh, we have to fit the uh, functionally right so whatever uh, floating 
functions we are designing for dealing with the oil and gas well. So the functionality is that. So uh, we will be selecting whether there will be a combination of wet and dry trees, meaning uh, this is all whether all the trees will be at the surface, so which means your surface plate which can handle the well head onto the platform, right? Because if you are selecting FPSO or semi sub normal, right? So you can go for the spar or tension leg platform, right? For the drilling well head or a location. F reservoir is scattered reservoir so the well cannot be uh, most of the well cannot be or majority surface cannot be handled at the surface so you can say in that case you will go 100% well to be the wet trees let's say uh, 50 percent would be uh, control at the surface and 50 percent the remote location well would be the uh, functional uh, analysis and design and then the uh, draining and work over which will be from where you will because uh, mobile uh, drilling unit or you will do uh, if dry well partly pre-drill will be with a drill ship or what comment that will uh, help or that will affect the selection of floating system which is your host floating system is your host They have uh, discussed, right? So uh, that is most important thing which will uh, influence the design of the floater. The wave condition, right? The uh, con the physical and conditions and the mechanical condition, right? Physical mechanical condition. Pressure risers, so these are the technical execution top side integration as it is. So these are the modules. So how you are in so they should remain intact onto this like it looks like a semi submersible, right? Or maybe the hull for the Right. So this under hurricane period, so these uh, uh, modules which are topside, how they are in installation and commissioning. Because from here, uh, this pro ship, how they will be towing this hull and at which stage. Uh, at the mid distance or while reaching to the site location right so these are the uh, the uh, operation safety reliability and availability this is uh, which will be the most for example uh, when we will discuss uh, at Detachable or permanently moved. Detachable, which means that uh, for safety purposes, like Gulf of Mexico, right? So where the uh, <coughs> uh, FPSO can be detached with the subsea system, and it can be uh, sailed out. 
a safer location right because during the hurricane period right or directionally changing so again uh, looking at say the type of uh, floater is being uh, determined flexibility contracting future expansion as i said of oil but uh, you can say after 10 years or 20 years uh, if technology permit so because it is high capital so we oil today because when the but we design with the flexibility that the future expansion is possible most importantly is the commercial part capex opex and schedule right schedule means the execution plan and installation oil economics so these are the categories which we usually consider when we are selecting in feed and if floaters so which is uh, interdependent to all these parameters right that's why one of the slides of uh, the collaboration with decision making and project success so uh, those factors we can try depth of water seabed the deck requirement which is the weight the facilities right on the deck how many module size of field either pipeline or shuttle tanker if shuttle tanker then you need storage right type of drilling such that active site drilling wildcat key drivers for floating system selection so as uh, again uh, reservoir reservoir much field architecture and layout future expandability like right? field architecture this overall right the field of many well from motions right uh, mat ocean criteria top side requirement local content requirement drilling and completion strategy plan and delivery model so these are the uh, some economic side right selection total subsea battery is surface uh, as 100 percent battery and 100 percent dry is capex right is lower right it is higher drilling cost drilling expenditure cost drill shape or something right uh, then but at surface so uh, because through hose you are controlling so drilling expenditure same thing uh, operational cost operational uh, expenditure in the subsea battery is high right because it is in here you are dealing with the surface right production reliability is lower cost right so, which means it is better. Reservoir management and productivity, it is also higher. So, looking at this, right, you have to come to the capital cost and reliability, right, and management 
uh, team. So you can have a combination of this. So depending on to that. So this is a, a like a qualification metric. Any site development, you have done this study, collaborated. So for example, uh, all major decisions are being taken by the uh, uh, chair that, right? So where, uh, one or two, I mean, we are not going to that, right? So this is the matrix. Whatever. So this is the uh, deep water concept qualification matrix, right? This is an example. Deep water. Legion, field proven, right? Or qualified, right? Uh, these are the so for example field application so uh, th this matrix is being showing right so different conventional fixed platform more than 100 1000 feet right so uh, this is the right area here you can say field application experience production so major capability in production, drilling, storage. Water depth rating, right? A payload, right? Which is at the deck, right? So these, these are the criteria. And reservoir information, yeah. Uh, tree type, uh, wet dry or combination right uh, so uh, right and export right in that conventional fixed platform experiences right uh, compliant tower right different right uh, because we can come up with this right uh, FPSO compliant towers, F, uh, FDPSO meaning to say uh, floating uh, design something FPSO spread mood when we will go in detail turret mood unconventional right custom made for example so these are all system and based on that we can uh, say the qualified which means deep draft dry trees so this is uh, let's say it will take the decision right here uh, feel proven but this is qualified right so based on this matrix uh, decision is being taken right for different stages right so all studies will go in this matrix So uh, deep water technologies need how uh, because uh, they are progressing and what uh, further to be done. So integrative management is one thing. The whole system flow assurance flow meaning to say the pumping flow, right? Uh, big data management. These are the three major issues, right? Which we have right integrity. The, throughout the lifetime, right? The three criteria, right? Because uh, this is uh, very far away, right? This is showing, this is your show, right? So, and you are going, this is your deeper, deeper, and deeper, and very far away, 500 kilometers. So, uh, if you will look, this is the overall. Uh, is spectrum of the deep water so the integrity of this system right because uh, the integrity management because uh, as we are looking most is over here right and 
So the, the shoreline is over here, right? So this is uh, uh, the from here you have to manage the integrity, which is in, in zero. Second, because all these fields, so you we are looking uh, fifty thousand barrel of oil per day pumping. So that is slow assurance, right? So the system because long pipeline it is not you can pump from the well but the uh, riser or line right they may be choked right so picking you will be doing right the the next subject which uh, i think after two weeks dr william paul the, the reliability of pipeline right so vex formation picking right all those we have to do for the flow assurance and the uh, most important thing in management, right? The data, the size of data is very, very high. So big data analysis. Right? So management of big data management is one of the most important criteria. Right? So this is where uh, deep water technology needs. Uh, there are and more advancement and more qualification and expertise are needed right so uh, this is uh, the the sub things right for example uh, more to be done subsea separation right rather than you will bring everything over here in future uh, subsea separation right bop uh, blow out preventing uh, reliability, right? Linear drilling, right? Linear drilling, which means you are drilling from here and it is going like this, horizontal, not the vertical, linear drilling, something like this. You drill from uh, this surface and long linear drilling. Right, because nowadays it is linear drilling, right? So uh, long distance, even horizontal drilling is being there, right? So this is subsea boosting, right? How this flow assurance, uh, high pressure flexibility, uh, mat ocean design criteria, right? Characteristic, yeah? ultra deep mooring system design. So these are the where more studies are being needed, right? Rigless intervention, right? So uh, these are the scope or uh, that will be in future, you will find uh, more studies and more technologies will become, right? So, so these are the trends, capex inflation out, uh, uh, packing uh, oil pricing or outpacing oil price is inflation most deep water projects are now mega projects right because uh, with low yield it is not feasible industry is struggling to achieve acceptable commercial result geographic geologic and geopolitical trends are root causes right so this is uh, like uh, field sanctions Deep water cost index, right? Which is deep water cost index uh, at the oil price. So uh, th that's something with economics. So uh, these are some uh, challenges, right? Uh, the cost ultra deep water working in ultra deep water long pipeback, as uh, in the previous slide. I've told you here, so it is 300, 400, 500 kilometer, right, away from the coast here. So it is long tieback, right? So this is an issue and challenge. Asset integrity, that's now, I told you, cost reduction, uh, disperse resources, right, uh, on very large area, just now I've shown you. So. These are the categories of challenges, right? So in ultra deep water, in riser particularly, 
So new materials, composite materials are being coming, right? Because this to handle this one of the area where people are working, disperse resources, so subsea inspection, right? Uh, technologies are being there, innovative subsea tools, right? For immersive uh, IOV or something, right? The, the remote operated vehicle, right? So subsea boosting uh, units, right? And environmental and underwater geo hazards monitoring, right? At the seabed the system. So electrical downhole safety wall. So these are the areas where people are working on, some experts are working. And uh, with Matt Ocean, as yesterday I was telling you, right? So basically, it is the uh, 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 the uh, frequency, natural frequency. So this slide is uh, showing that uh, uh, this is the period of vibration, low period or high period of vibration, right? So, so uh, uh, because either uh, it should be less than the period. So uh, you can see uh, this is uh, the uh, TLP or this side is vertically moved, right? Ten like tension like platform moving, right? So, so usually multi uh, vertically moved structures are uh, low oh, period. Right, five second or ten second, and this is spread moving, so the period of vibrations are high in that. Right, so uh, this is just more. Big. So this is the uh, the vibration uh, cycle. Right, and we have to keep lower than the uh, wave energy. Right, this is C energy. So this is comparison of the global design wave. Uh, little bit the wave uh, because wave is spectra. Is spectra what we are, uh, because it, we are not uh, talking about single wave, right? At a particular location at in five second or 10 second or 50 second, there will be various ways. For example, if I can say this is the uh, location and you can say within one minute, right? So a wave passed this different height from here. Just you can consider this is the base, right? So wave of this, right? Then 20 different waves, right? So this wave, this wave. So if you can see waves of different height have been passed, right? And different energy. So we cannot say uh, just with the highest wave. Highest wave we are. So we will take this data and this is the spectra. And based on that, we can come to the uh, whole wave spectrum, whole wave spectra. With meaning to say in one minute how many wave pass and uh, throughout the day uh, what is the uh, highest spectra and then we will look throughout the year then throughout the century so based on that we can come up to the the, the uh, statistics and uh, this is being showing uh, different seas in the world right so highest wave height spectral characteristics based on the uh, 100 years or 200 years data and so on right so uh, this is southeast asia so sig which is called the significant wave height right so spectral density right which is the wave energy and the wave period right which is uh, because the uh, this is the important data at which 
we have to uh, design the structure and we have to design the dynamic characteristics of the structure so that it should not be coincided with the peak spectral properties of the wave because if they will be uh, coinciding so there will be resonant condition that we will be avoiding so for example this is the uh, time periods right of the uh, uh, different seas right and based on that so this is the critical right of the uh, different sea right? this is like gulf of mexico right uh, so gulf of mexico right 40 over feet is the height which is the spectral density is uh, 700 over 50 square second per radian right so if we can this is most of the seas right so this is the region right where the dynamic which is natural period of vibration so either we can place in this region right this is the safe and this is the region right because if uh, the the natural frequency or time period will be here definitely we will cause because this is uh, the uh, the profile of most of the seas where uh, the the uh, uh, offshore structures are there right? we have to so that's why we have to design if we are putting here right so tlp this five second four second three second right when we are or we are having floater of uh, this right because horizontal time period and vertical right because ev right because these have a safe right so this is the mat ocean right the the ocean studies right based on that you need the expertise of the mat ocean studies right and so this is different seas this is based on this so more data is coming it will be but more or less the critical conditions are over there so the deep water game is changing development opportunities are more challenging deep water more complex reservoir sub economic accumulation ultra deep water and remote location viscous oil oil characteristics are changing low energy drive capex risk exposure are large cost exposures in the billions high cost drilling and infrastructure pressure to shorten schedule and reduce cost continuous as i said uh, we are uh, the local particularly southeast asia so you are looking uh, somewhere far away logistic is this competent still stopping shortage right so these are the uh, game changing in deep water uh, i think uh, this is uh, uh, the next chapter i will start so i will uh, uh, just uh, i think uh, uh, relevant to that right this slide so uh, this is basically first part two chapters uh, we have finished it's a, it is about 12 o'clock and uh, we can take a 10 minute break over here and then we can start the next uh, chapter right uh, which is chapter three which is little bit on the physics side fundamental of stability right so uh, can we it is 12 so by 12 10 right we see whether we can finish this chapter today right uh, when, uh, or uh, the next week right so uh, we can uh, go so uh,
maybe we will play. Okay, thank you. So the next is written with physics, all right? Because the uh, most important thing for the offshore structure, particularly floating structure, is their stability, right? Because in the water, so the wave and current, right? So th this will uh, cause the stability problem, stability issues, right? Because they are flexible, right? So we will look a bit uh, some fundamental of the stability. So the uh, first thing, uh, whenever we are talking to stability, uh, we have to look at the uh, motions, right? The degree of freedom, right? The ways of the motions, right? So even uh, previous chapter, last slide, which is uh, again here, that's why I say it is related. So whatever floater ship is also floating structure. So we have to first uh, consider there are uh, six degrees of freedom in which uh, structure can move, right? So three are the translation in x, y, z axis, and three are the rotation, right? Which is being given over here, right? So for example, translation, it can, the structure or like shift that it can move along x axis, right? Along y axis and along z axis, right? So, for example, uh, if uh, we consider the length, the longer side, longitudinal side of the floater, like this is x axis, right? Uh, this is. Right, with axis. The plan, this is y axis and perpendicular is z axis, right? So, double side of the shape along x axis. So, if it is moving in this direction to and fro, so this. And if it is uh, moving, because this is the main major axis, so it, it is moving left or right. It is sway, right? So along x-axis movement, right? Or longitudinal axis, transverse direction movement is sway and vertical movement up and down it is heaving right because of the wave uh, you can see heaving is also possible right uh, let's say this is the wave right this wave is suddenly it is there wave is suddenly go down right so the next wave is like this so it will so it is heaving so these are the three translational degree of freedom and there are uh, three Length, right? Along the length, if it is going to this, so this is called the rolling, right? It is just like you are the length up and down, right? This is pitching, right? About up the movement about transverse axis, so it. And this is rope. And if it is rotating or 
like this, right? It is, it is yawing, right? So either it is going like this, so. So these are the three degree, six degrees of freedom, three rotational degrees of freedom and three translational. Vibrating, right? And this vibration is the frequency or time period. How it can, because what just now we were saying, natural period of degree of freedom, right? So, for example, this is the stationary position, right? The main position. So. It is moving like this, right? So let's say from uh, uh, a cycle, from this position, it goes here, come back. This, this, this. How much time it is taking? That is the period of vibration. So sometimes it, it will be varying the maximum. So that will be period of vibration in, or that is the response, right? So that can be very, right? With the, with the, so that why we can, can say re response. Sometimes it is going one meter, sometimes it is going property right you can say at every second so it is going uh, displacement and vibration so that is called right amplitude how right uh, maximum to minimum how much it has gone right so it is an important property and that the amplitude it will go in this direction right uh, maximum this is the amplitude right the maximum amplitude yeah. risers and other attachment right so controlling the uh, degrees six degrees of freedom of the floater and important criteria for the stability so whenever we are talking about stability some characteristics right so of the floater right so this is so uh, as we say for stability partly right the floater is underwater the So it is called this depth is called the draft right and draft is one of the important property and normally the width uh, of this is the depth so the pressure whenever you are applying so uh, for example Right, so there will be uh, uh, D not uh, dx and dy is the area, right? So the weight or uh, for the which is the dead load, right? This is the applied payload, right? If you can, you are putting, right? Just like you can put in load placing. And you are pressing, this is your applied pressure. And you are facing, right, that the, uh, the, the water is returning, right? In that, you take a small plate. You try to press a small plate. So the plate will put upward pressure. So that is the... This is your applied. 
Đây. Boy and C. Right? And there will be. So let's say applied pressure is P naught. So on this area, D is dy. This is the buoyant pressure, which is depending on to the Archimedes principle, the weight of the displaced because one meter by one meter by one meter, it is inside the water. So it has uh, displaced one meter cube of water. So the weight is a solid object. So that weight will cause the upward pressure that is the buoyancy, right? Archimedes principle. So the buoyancy so weight of the displaced volume of water, right? So that is uh, again, so displaced volume pressure is and the weight of this, if the uh, weight is, if it is uh, Z, right? So the rho G is the rho is the mass dimension. Height of this bar is Z area. So this is the weight. For equilibrium, right? Uh, P naught plus weight, right? Floating for the uh, floating, right? If it will be a float, right? So total applied load plus the total weight must. If this condition, so if you will say dx this, so the the total buoyant force or buoyancy pressure. Uh, weight pressure plus the uh, weight pressure. So this is the rule of uh, floating structure, right? We put uh, one bar. So again, there will be pressure which will be zero at the top onto this floater. So part of the pressure which is varying zero to maximum and this pressure is uh, rho g right uh, rho g z right or gap density times uh, z at different distance so this is the uh, triangular right this is basic fluid mechanics what you have Stability of floating structure is a fundamental design problem that requires understanding of the basic physics that control the stability of the game of this physics term, right? Uh, which uh, just now in the previous slide, volume, density, weight, center of gravity, force, and So, for example, uh, this is the ship, right? The structure, if you will take, right? So, we will be. This is the uh, uh, cross section side, right? So, uh, this you can consider, right? So, let's say. Uh, is here. So the ship is uh, straight, for example. Take some load, the blue, right? Original position. So at the center, this is the center of gravity of the ship. You can move uh, to a distance T, so it can, uh, it is, it will be. Uh, pitching right about x axis, so it will be pitching movement. So that is called the trip. 
it will do this. These are some terms. Making an angle theta along the length, right? So this is streaming, and uh, on the cross section side, so you longitudinal, so it will be straight, right? So you will be putting here, so you will be, uh, it will be. by moving a weight outbound, right? So basically, when the resultant forces, right? So this is the type of floating structure, right? On the deck, we are putting certain weight, right? So when the resultant of force due moving away from the center of area, which is center of gravity. So the floater can be a pitch or it can be. This will be the streaming or uh, writing will be uh, more than the return because this is like uh, elastic, right? Be more so it will be sinking right so that uh, uh, because when it is going so the uh, buoyancy forces I spring right we can say if Water right? Floating, right? This is the buoyant forces, and the resultant is here. Right? Resultant of all load is here. So this is center of gravity is here so it is going in this position right so this buoyant forces come back right so this theta but if this theta will be more so this buoyant forces will be going less than the so uh, from there, we can say that uh, when the uh, floater will be moving, so the center of buoyancy will also be moving, shifting, right? So uh, there is a game. When center of buoyancy and center of gravity coincide, gravity will be above or below the center of gravity. So that will affect the stability of the floater, right? So whenever we are talking, the floater, so what, where, or uh, where will be the new location of the center of buoyancy, right? So that we will see. is a force just now here uh, you take the football right so uh, you will feel you are pressing football you take into the swimming so you will feel because you, some pressure is coming on your hand right so that is the buoyancy force right so when a body is immersed in fluid an upward force is exerted by the fluid on the body, right? This is the experiment you can. So this upward force is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the fluid. 
weight of the football but it is related to the volume of the football right the buoyancy is related to with your full pressure you put uh, you immerse football 100% so let's say what is this sphere what was the volume of water right so the weight of the uh, uh, volume of this water is the one because the reason is that water will tend to reoccupy the space so that is the uh, equal to the weight and this weight is uh, push the food food right so buoyant force is the upward force on an object exerted by the surrounding there is a floating body right continuous body right the reason is that you cannot cut water into two pieces right you take water water is a continuous right the solid you can cut you can cut you can uh, here so there will be gray but in water you can right so when an object pushes water the water pushes back with as much force as it can so if the water can push back as hard the object floats boat if not it sinks right like a sea in this case so the buoyant force is caused by the difference between the pressure at the top of the object which is the gravitational force downward force which pushes it downward and the pressure at the bottom buoyant force which pushes it up greater than at the top every object submerged in the fluid feels an upward buoyant force right so buoyant force in other sense is the floating force water is heavier then object so the object flow right but uh, right uh, uh, low density more likely the flow float buoyant force is uh, measured in newton or glow newton or newton per meter millimeter square or so on so the physically how do we calculate a buoyant force is the weight of displaced fluid or a buoyant force is the weight of object in the air minus the weight of object in the water right the weight of object either the weight of the displaced fluid meaning to say the uh, the easy way you can say that uh, this is and object right this is the plan of the barge and this is the cross section right and uh, this is for example half of the this is under water right this is the drop so the displaced volume this area multiplied by drop right so for example this is 2 meter by 4 meter so area is uh, 8 meter square this is 5 meter deep but 
under water is 3 meter. So 8 meter by 3 meter because it has displaced this 3 meter. Right? So this draft, it is under water is 3 meter. So the volume will become 8 times 3, 24 cubic meter. So which means that uh, the partially uh, submerged object has displaced 24 cubic meter water. So the density of water, the weight of this water density, if you will just take uh, 10 kilonewton uh, per meter cube, so 10 times uh, 24. So 240 kilonewton uh, will be the uh, upward. This object will be less than 24 kilonewton or equal to 24 kilonewton. So it will float. If the weight will be uh, more than 24 kilonewton, it will sink. Right, because uh, the buoyancy will be less than the uh, weight of the displaced volume. Right, so the lighter objects, that's why they float. Right, because the lighter object, uh, the density, the weight, the gravitational force is less than the uh, weight of displaced volume. Right, so that's why uh, the volume will play. Right. So the if you are taking the boat, right, the shape of the boat will play a significant role, right? So uh, that's why object in the air minus weight of the object in water. So this is the buoyancy force. So we are talking buoyancy, uh, which is the condition of equilibrium, right? So when the, there are three possible things, right? So submerged or uh, uh, objects, right? Uh, like this in the mid, you are sailing. So positive buoyancy, negative buoyancy, and neutral buoyancy, right? So sink. Uh, uh, halfway or so the positive buoyancy force is greater than the weight so that the object flow right buoyancy force is greater than right so it is uh, floating neutral buoyancy when buoyant force is equal to the weight so the object is suspended in the flow like this right and when the So these are the three types of uh, buoyancy, right? Three characteristics of buoyancy. Then the fluid, they are in. Things float if they weigh less than the buoyant force pushes up. Uh, this is more important, right? This is why uh, this shape floating and why this shape sinking, right? Because of this shape, right? So the, the, the displaced volume. In this case, you have spread it, right? So the because the displaced volume weight is higher than the weight of uh, this shape. So that's why it flows, right? So, th so that's why thing float if they less, they are less dense. So if it is football, it can be float. If it is a steel ball, it can be a sink, right? So it is dense. Things float if they weigh less than the one, right? Like this, if it weigh less. And think float if they are shaped, so their weight is spread out, right? In this case, right? So how can you get 50 kg of solid steel to float, right? So this is the ball displaced water weight less than the ball weight, hull. Same thing, the weight 
the two objects having the same weight 50 kg 50 kg but the, because of the shape right so this hull right so that's why this is the preferred shape of the boat of the floater right so these are the fundamentals so again uh, uh, as center of uh, uh, Gravity, there is also a uh, center of is supposed to act known as center of buoyancy, right? The center right of center of volume, right? Center of displaced volume. If we can say the so the center of displaced volume. The mass center is the center of buoyancy. Center of gravity is the center. So there are two things. If we are taking uh, uh, right, uh, cross section, right? So there is. of uh, the hull is called key right this is center of gravity this is center of buoyancy right and this is the meta center height so meta center what it is it is defined as the point about which a body start oscillating when the body is tilted by a small entity right so uh, this is the hanging point at which body is giving left and right right so the point m is not moving right about a point at which this body right in, in rolling condition it is rolling with respect to point m so the distance between g and m is called the meta center height it is the point at which the line of action of the force of buoyancy will meet the normal axis of the body when the body is giving a small angular displacement. Right? So these are some definitions. Right? So it is the uh, distance between the meta center of the floating body and the center of gravity, right? Like in this case, if we move here, right? Make it a little bigger. Right. So, uh, just you can see, uh, this is the mat mg, and now, uh, whenever it is being tilting, like pendulum, right? So, uh, g, and uh, this is the center line, right? And uh, it, so, you will draw a perpendicular line. So, this is the g1. So, this is the uh, new meta center with theta and this is the b1 over here right so we can find this height by the two method analytical method the gm right uh, is uh, one upon this this side is volume of submerged body Right, which is displaced volume, this underwater minus BG, distance B to G, distance between uh, center of buoyancy and center of gravity. Right, so volume of submerged body is this, right, and I is the moment of inertia, right, I upon uh, this. Right, I is the moment of inertia of the water plane area. Right, so about uh, this x is the moment of inertia at b d cube upon 12. Right, so if you are taking about uh, the longitudinal axis, right, so uh, this will be d, length will be b. 
VDQ upon 12 will be the uh, moment of inertia. So condition of equilibrium of a floating and submerged body like this bottle is given based on the B and G location, right? So uh, they, there are three scenario, right? Uh, this is like the free surface. This is like uh, the vertical, right? Uh, where uh, B and G are aligned, right? Neutral position and a G, B is above G, right? And when it is B uh, moving, right? So uh, the B is above G or uh, B, uh, right? So uh, this can be moved clockwise or anti-clockwise, right? So the weight is uh, here, you can say, weight is at the left because here no movement, right? B and G, F, B and V are aligned, right? Eccentricity is zero. So there will be no movement, right? So upward force is at right, downward force at left. So that uh, this will cause, because it will return, right? The buoyancy, so it is causing this movement. So it is returning back, right? So you can say this movement is positive. When left, weight is at left of P in this condition. So that is the positive buoyancy, right? But in this case, so it is sink, it is further sink. Weight is further pushing down. So that is the negative, right? So that is, sorry, uh, stable, unstable. A is the stable equilibrium. B is unstable when uh, W and B, but B is a blow G, right? Neutral equilibrium when F is equal to W is equal to F B, right? And uh, B and G are the same, right? Or uh, this condition. So neutral buoyancy and stability which measure of the gravitational force buoyancy. I think this many. So stability equilibrium if the point M is above G, right? Point M is above G, matter center height. Unstable equilibrium if the point M is below G, right? So it is stable, it is also stable, point M, but when point M is below G in this case, right? About which it is rotating. And if the neutral equilibrium, if uh, the point M is at G. So this is above, this is below, and this is same, right? So uh, whenever we are designing, we have to consider the naval architecture. So stability is uh, resistance to capsizing. Otherwise, the structure will fail, right? So center of buoyancy is located at center of mass of the displaced water. Right, so uh, it is depending on to the shape, right? If it is rectangular shape, so center of mass will be at the center of volume, right? But for irregular shape, how the mass is distributed, right? So, and then no external force, the center of gravity and center of buoyancy are in same vertical plane. Upward force, of water equal to the weight of floating vessel, and this weight is equal to the weight of displaced volume. Under wind load, vessel heel, and uh, does the center of buoyancy move up and down, right? It is pushing, like 
wind load or other horizontal pressure so that can move right so rules of floater design right whenever so uh, we have to design so first rule of floater design buoyancy must equal weight plus any right because uh, we are uh, payload as well weight that load of structure plus any machine weight people weight everything everything can even the riser right so the first rule of floater whenever we are designing so we have to make sure that the buoyancy must be equal to the weight plus any external vertical forces so whenever we are talking weight of the hull itself right hull outfitting anything connecting to that top side payload fixed and variable right the fixed weight and variable which is weight of people weight of machines furniture whatever top side structure weight ballast in hull as i said ballast is the weight adding of weight to bring it up and down so all the way external forces are the component of mooring mooring some time mooring is pushing it down right so any force which is causing right against the buoyancy buoyancy is upward so anything attachment directly or indirectly which is causing structure to come down which will be coming to that so in simple all downward loads must be equal to the buoyancy for the floater design otherwise floater will sink so uh, all properties that floating structure exhibit when perturb from their equilibrium state a stable ship quickly uh, rest uh, this uh, wave condition often we wish for a stable working platform such that the platform that does not move too much in wave in the uh, in this the same property do we so this is like vertically small movement right so center i think this i have already explained and right? so center of gravity is the center of area basically right and uh, it is the center of mass right buoyancy this volume the way the center right of the mass water weight right so that is the uh, the center of buoyancy right you can calculate right the uh, mass right so this is the stability the moment immerse weight so this is from neutral position so so weight efficiency right so structural weight efficiency is the top to take weight so again it is being uh, given what include the top side payload weight of all deck equipment and the facilities a uh, top tension risers connecting to the uh, catenary riser load and uh, secondary deck steel top side equipment facilities carried in the hull and uh, hull ballast uh, weight for future expansions are also included right and uh, the total hull plus deck weight is this the so evaluation of floating platform hull 
wave induced motion and effects of current and wind for uh, as we say uh, we have to look the characteristics in heavy sway and rolling these are the critical implication on riser ties and support of riser structural challenges complex with respect to accident way right so application issues modular fabrication and installation so second rule of flow uh, must be equal to or less than the buoyancy the second positioning of weight right the weight how the center of weight Right, the position of weight on the platform. The weight shall be positioned such that the head hull will not tip over. Right, hull meaning to say uh, it be tilted and the it can be tip over. For example, here is showing typhoon TLP after Hurricane Rita in this. So the the uh, the top side. Have been take over because uh, it has been tilted much, right? So the positioning is also very important, right? Because it can slide down. And third rule: there should be enough reserve buoyancy to maintain balance and stability, right? So, for example, this is a neutral position. This is showing uh, this platform under her semi after Hurricane Dennis. Reserve buoyancy in deck save it from sinking, right? Because uh, under this storm, it, so it has been tilted, right? But because uh, the position of meta center height was above the CG, so uh, this is like a spring, right? And the weight on to that remain intact right this is the situation you can you can face during the storm right this is the real life right but some this is after explosion in column not enough reserve so, so this is like a stability you are putting four column and because of any reason, one of the column blast, the structure can maintain the stability, and there should be some reserve buoyancy. Support the deck above the highest wave crest, right? because it can push wave crest, right? So some, because of the upward, right? which means that the bottom of the deck, right? And this is the water. So this is air gap. So under a stormy condition, if we, right? This failure, right? Not enough air gap, right? The, the highest wave uh, can touch the bottom of the hull, right? So this I have already uh, I've got some nomenclature, right? Uh, which is being used. This is the draft I told you. This is freeboard. This side is strand, uh, and this side is the bow. This is the key, and these are the uh, degree of freedom along x, y, z axis. Right. So the translations are, uh, which is in mm or meter, and this is in radian or angle. Right. And these are the considered positive sign convention. So the trim is the uh, static pitch. Right. The trim, if uh, you will apply a, a force uh, up with this, so that is the static pitch, which means 
not the movie. So what is, if you can shift the way, so how is the static role, right? So this is static, the maximum role and gain is the key. These are the trimming, which means the, it is pitching, right? Trimming. So these are the two possible uh, uh, scenario which may cause the failure. Depth of vessel, uh, breadth, width, scantling are the dimension of structural component. Beam, column, dimensions are called scantling. Archimedes principle, which I have explained, the buoyancy of an object is equal to the weight of displacement. So there some you can calculate, for example, uh, in this object, the draft is T, which is the part of the structure under water, right? Which is the, 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 the uh, red part, right? So it is T, the width is B, and length is L, right? So the uh, rectangular by the static pressure, right? Which is rho G, Z, right? Z is the uh, uh, height, right? So force is pressure into area, right? So F is equal to T times A, right? So rho G T, the, the, the pressure, right? Uh, which is rho G, is, G rho is the uh, mass density of the water, G is the static gravity, and T, right? So this is the pressure, right? Rho GT, because it is uh, kilonewton per cubic meter multiplied by draft, right? So that will be pressure per square meter, right? And multiplied by water plane area, which is B times L. So Rho GT, B times L, right? So TBL is the volume of the displaced. So rho g times volume, it is the density. So all two forces of importance for offshore structures are pressure forces. So we can say in naval architecture, right, the inverted delta LBT, right, is the volume, right, and uh, gamma LBT, right. So displacement, right? So the buoyancy force is uh, in naval architecture, right? So, uh, because B is this. So this is, so LBT inverted delta is the volume, right? Uh, displacement, and it is delta displacement, which is buoyancy force, right? So gamma W LBT, right? Gamma W is the density of fluid, which is rho G. Right. So LB, if it is uh, ship shape, so uh, this uh, displaced volume, we can uh, up multiply some shift factor, right? The CB. So that will be the displaced volume and multiply. So when the ship catalog in architecture, the CB is given block coefficient, right? So, which is simple arithmetic. If you can, uh, a simple example, example, compute the draft T for the prismatic rectangular bar. It is 100 uh, meter long, 30 meter wide, and weight of bars is 4,000 ton, right? And uh, for seawater, most the density is uh, either 10 kilonewton at 10.25 kilonewton per meter or 1.025 ton per meter cube, right? So uh, again, the first rule, the weight uh, including all must be equal to the buoyancy, right? So buoyancy is, uh, which is gamma W LBT is buoyancy. So we can say this weight is equal to buoyancy 
based on first rule, right? So weight is 4,000, right? Uh, gamma W is given this L and B, 130. So we can uh, estimate the draft, which is required 1.3 meter draft for the floating, for floating, right? For neutral. So by that way, we can, so these are the some simple, simple examples, right? So there are same thing, other uh, cuboid shaped wooden block, LBD, 1.45, meter floats in water. If the block weight is 0.154 ton, find the draft uh, of the, if it floats in the fresh water density one, ton per meter cube, the same thing, right? Which, so you know, weight is equal to, this is displaced volume, this is the buoyancy, right? So the weight is equal to this, so we can get the drop. Because there are two, uh, uh, American and British. American English drop is DRAFT, and British English drop is this, but same. If we know it's drop, we can know its volume displacement, we can find its weight, right? So there is another thing because when we have to do the floater design, right? So what should be the maximum payload, right? So if we can fix the draft, right? Five meter or two meter, right? And we, we, we know the, uh, for example, uh, displaced volume size. So we can say, okay, uh, what is the weight of the structure? Then we can say this is the payload, equipment and other could be applied, right? So, uh, because more options you can make. So, this, there is another example of box bars, length uh, 100 meter by 20 meter, floats at a draft of 5 meter in sea water. This, right? Uh, find the weight, right? So, while floating, in seawater density, this volume of displaced in LBT, right? All this giving. So, weight of displaced volume is uh, 10,250 tons. So, now if there is given, this is the total weight, including the weight of the bar and the payload. So, let's say. Uh, uh, if we can say the weight of the barge is 5,000 ton, so what is the payload? So 10,250 minus 5,000, so that is the payload could be applied. This is the maximum load, maximum live load we can put onto the deck of the ship, including the weight of the people, right? So it can float. So this is the uh, this some fundamentals of this, right? So hydrostatic stiffness, as I was telling, we press the football, it will go, we leave our hand, it will come back, right? So that it is the uh, spring effect, right? The fictitious, imaginary spring, right? So if the weight, we will add a weight of delta W, right? So, so it, the draft will be added by delta t right so we will remove draft will come to the original right because this is the pain so this is the elastic so this delta w upon delta t is the uh, elastic or hydrostatic stiffness right or uh, which is equal to the if you can simplify so the weight density of water multiplied by water plane area Water plane area is the means the area of the object touching the water, right? In this case, uh, this BT, right? So this is touching the water. AW is the L into B. So that is the water uh, plane area, right? So this is the stiffness. So meaning to say this water plane area, 
win win of the stiffness, right? The length to breadth ratio of the uh, floater is an important aspect in designing, right? Now we come to this hull structure like semi submersible or hull for, for uh, the uh, tension lake platform. So, for example, in this, uh, there are four columns and four pontoons, right? So, this will be uh, again uh, this column, right? Which is being space 60 meter, right? And the column diameter is, uh, let's say, 10 meters. So, again, you can calculate. And the uh, uh, pontoon cross section is 10 meters by 5 meters. So semi submersible weight is 3,000 ton. How much payload plus other load can it carry? What is the vertical stiffness? Sea water is this, right? So again, uh, for solving this, right? You can say semi submersible, how much uh, it can take, right? So you can take this uh, same thing, the displaced volume. Right. You can say that it is uh, half. This is the deck, right? So this part is, for example, how much it is in water, right? So let's say uh, 25 meter deep in water, let's say. So in the same procedure, you can uh, calculate. So intro to hydrostatic uh, and stability, right? So as uh, we discussed earlier, so that it is called if the wind is applying over here, right? So it shifts, right? It is tilting, it is rolling. So if uh, this is the wind, wind is tending to rotate in this direction, and if the uh, center of buoyancy is this, right, upward at the left of the load, so it is causing the uh, anti moment right the wind moment is the clockwise and the restoring because this will be the restoring so uh, if this condition so long buoyancy is left uh, this side right of the way when it is being tilting so uh, just now i have shown you this is the positive stable condition uh, right so uh, the, that uh, platform has survived after the storm, right? Because during a storm. But when the stormy force are too high, right? Uh, or this angle, because if it is being tilted, so the buoyancy is left of this. So it is causing, because the wind will be uh, causing clockwise moment, so buoyancy, because this couple of moment is also clockwise, so the structure will fade, right? It will capsize, right? So we have to make sure when we are designing again this area, this condition, negative stable or unstable condition uh, never exists, right? So that we can say that uh, meta center because about which it is being, right? So uh, this is uh, whenever it is being tilted, this green area is the gate buoyancy, right? When, because it will bring in, and this is the lost buoyancy, right? So lost buoyancy should be less than the gained buoyancy, right? So when a vessel roll or pitch, the center of buoyancy shift. This is what makes the vessel with the center of gravity above the center of buoyancy is stable or not, right? This is the meta center is the point of interaction between the action of the buoyancy and the force, right? And, and the center line of the vessel, right? This is onto the center line of the vessel, right? So when it is being crossing over here, right? So the meta center, if in this position, it is also being shifting. 
right so meta center is above the uh, center of gravity right so uh, because when d will be here meta center will come here right so that is the uh, new and in this case this is the stable equilibrium right so center of buoyancy to meta center i bm which is uh, moment of energy upon uh, volume right uh, inverted delta right so it is being calculated by that so this is the uh, height of bn right so center of buoyancy to meta center height it is bm bm is a function of the water if it is roll right or it is pitch so you have to take the moment of inertia about that so center of buoyancy or to meta center example for example that right, rectangular part right so about roll position right so in this case right uh, because it is rolling not pitching right is this so it is moving with respect to this axis right rolling so the depth will be d uh, and length breadth will be l so the moment of inertia if it is rolling right so l b q upon 12 right like angle right uh, all of you still remember right moment of inertia and displaced volume is l b t right so b square upon 12t is the bn but if it is pitching so that will be b l cube upon 12 upon l b t so l square upon 12t right so this is the simple simple things right which uh, i also give in the now uh, it is like this right uh, the the uh, six so about x x axis so moment of inertia will be about this axis so it is transform moment so area multiplied by this distance right so if this is distance s so six circle right so the moment of inertia about the x circle itself because you are transforming about this axis so this distance is s by 2 so that will be s by 2 square into area and 6 square so th this six are same so moment of inertia about this axis will be that and displaced vo volume is the same volume which is area of six uh, a circle and the draft of each circle right so so about other axis so it is the moment of inertia because about this axis so because only two circle here two circle here right so there are some examples uh, which you can calculate a uh, bm right so uh, this is the meta a uh, vectorial moment right so gm into uh, this buoyancy force delta sin theta right because uh, right uh, this angle is theta right so vectorial moment so you are taking the vertical component right so vertical component is sin theta of this force right because it is causing right uh, this force will the vertical component will cause this moment right so G, gm right so gm time this will cause the uh, restoring moment so a small angle right so this is the writing arm right gz so these are some other properties so with uh, just geometry 
right? So you draw so GM uh, is the meta center height and DM. So from here, right, with this KB plus DM minus KG, or uh, so uh, these are some properties. If GM is positive, it is unstable. If GM is negative, right? So upper upward is positive because G to M. If it is uh, bottom, is negative, right? Direction. I think this I have explained in the previous slide. And hydrostatic stiffness in this case, because it is rotation, so additional moment, right? So uh, with uh, additional theta, so the, so GM times B, GM times uh, 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 buoyancy is the uh, the rotational stiffness of the uh, rolling or pitching object, right? So a uh, typical minimum GM value, which is one of the control parameter for the design, right? So passenger and cargo ship. Uh, so this is initial GM 0.15 meter, typically this. For semi-submersible or structure, GM can be more than three meter typical spar uh, platform because deep draft GM can be more than six meter typical right so whenever in feed right just now so these are the basic properties right some example i have given here practically fill tanks reduce gm right so tanks with free surface force center of uh, gravity to shift in the same direction at the center of buoyancy shift, reducing stability, right? So, yeah. so this is partially filled tanks that reduce the GM. So another term is the damage stability when uh, we the, the compartmentalization, right? Just now one. Uh, tank uh, damage or one column damage at which we have to also because uh, accidental effects so we should have to have some reserve stability to avoid sinking right just now i have shown you one of the column was failed but still it survived right so that is the damage stability under damage condition we can also look for uh, the uh, crane because on the platform, right? So the when crane will be lifting some object at particular height and with full boom. So it will also change the GM, right? So at this position again, because uh, we have to do this. So new GM, so with, when, uh, with the, when the crane was not operative, so it is this so new GM is equal to original GM minus due to the effects of crane, which is the weight, maximum weight it can lift and the maximum height, right? And again, rho times the displaced volume, which is of this, right? Displaced volume of this. So it will shift the GM with the crane, right? So all consider when we are designing right so these are some fundamentals of the hydrostatic stiffness as i said it is uh, we are not designing but these fundamentals right which are simple simple example of formula i have given some examples i have given some maybe i will share with you with some solution right 
so there are also uh, the rules and codes right which is the stability requirement so there are standards so these are some standards we follow that right so uh, this i just so these are some uh, stability satisfying criteria so because the wind or horizontal movement so we have to draw this gz which is the writing arm right this length gz right from here right when it is being shifting right and this end versus this angle right because this is the angle of roll or angle of pitch right so uh, with the uh, tilting of that increasing the angle gz value will be uh, also shifting so this is when we plot right in feet or in meter gz versus so this is the uh, uh, good uh, plotting for the stability right stability plot right so you, we, are, we will see right with the tilting of that so gz increases to some point then decreases and goes negative right so that will cause the when it will go a uh, negative Uh, that will cause the uh, sinking or failure of the structure right so uh, again uh, we have to uh, look uh, that we can right because it can return so like it will be tilted like this is the structure so this is the wind force right so wind is pushing it is tilting so these are the reaction forces right so uh, then uh, the maximum wind based on this characteristic how much it can be cause tilting right so that uh, the equilibrium condition is b so normally we have to when ever we are designing we are considering the critical wind condition right so for example like uh, in, in south china sea right although all the time it is not but these are the uh, wind conditions are being considered in the design of uh, the uh, floating structure stability and there are also we do the some model testing right so we in the wind tunnel laboratory where we can uh, estimate that the uh, under the worst condition the positive uh, stability right we can ensure so these are some uh, rules right must have a positive gm for all condition survive overturning moment from the critical wind right like this is for south china sea in inclining test is required for the first unit series which is like this right and writing moment uh, curve and overturning moment curve are required for all operating right so this curve which right so this is writing moment right this and overturning we will also put the overturning moment curve right the uh, next uh, i will show you right so this and we have to do the water type and uh, weather type integrating so this is the overturning moment and writing moment so we will be having right so moment versus inclination angle right on this axis right so that is for intact is in stability right as we say we have intact in integrative of weather type and water type so weather type 
intact stability in 100 kilometer wind right in meters per second so this wind at different angle what will be the overturning moment right when it was vertical right so uh, this angle right and one angle is five degree 20 degree, right this is zero degree 5 10 20 so the overturning moment so this at different angle position you can uh, with this wind force so this is the overturning moment and this is gz right writing on right? so uh, so we can uh, have over there three areas right where, where on this right curve and in this curve a b c so we take the area area a minus b right must be greater B plus, I think both are plus sign, right? So uh, A plus B, right? Uh, B plus C, right? K is uh, 1.3 for all other units, right? So this is uh, one of the intact, intact meaning to say as we say the uh, features of the uh, 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 payload features will not will remain intact during a storm right so this is with full flight so mobile uh, drilling damage stability rule right so the component plus my uh, minus three meter from water line, right? These are the guideline. Tank below the water line containing ballast pump, and so these are the equilibrium conditions. So basic damage stability, right? So so when we, again these are the same curve we use for the damage. So after getting one column damage or two column damage, we can draw the same curve and follow the same procedure, right? The area A plus B and compared to area B plus C. And then a uh, watertight water should not enter into the column. And again, uh, this is for watertight. So these are some uh, rules, right? Uh, and uh, for example, the uh, different uh, guidelines. So a guideline for the floating production. So the semi-submersible positive GM in all condition, right? Uh, MODU rules, right? Uh, to be applied, right? Mobile drilling units rule which is the drill ship rules will be applied here alternative stability criteria may be accepted right so these are the guidelines so uh, the next is the uh, global response of the floating structure right and so we can uh, we have uh, uh, reached to 69 right so uh, can we take 10 minutes break over here 10 or 15 minutes break so uh, i think uh, i can wrap up today this right we have about 100 slides so 30 35 more slides are there right so uh, some small small example I have given here, right? And maybe I will collect from the previous test or examples, and I will share more, right? So uh, that will uh, make your concern. But it is well this simple simple formula uh, because this is basic of the stability. Okay.
the time is uh, uh, we can come up by 150 will it be okay so then maybe another 45 minutes right or, or uh, so we can wrap up today okay thank you So other design consideration. So here uh, we will also consider the global response of the float, global as a overall response of the floater floating structure, right? Uh, what we have to consider. Let's consider what are the forces will be. Uh, so this is like uh, the structure like at uh, the left is the uh, platform. For example, the jacket platform. This is the jacket structure. This is the platform. All these and maybe horizontal force. And this is the floating structure, right? Uh, so. Uh, this uh, the uh, structure is founded these are the reactions or the uh, support reaction right so uh, the the basic thing to fix what this floating structure so reaction to dynamic load which is wind or earth uh, a wave or current which is pushing Uh, for the uh, fixed structure, which is uh, basically uh, the equilibrium condition follow, right? So must be equal to zero equilibrium. And this external force, which is which can be right, uh, time dependent, the wind. The sinusoidal wave force. So, uh, this is the fixed bottom structure. So the force applied force will be dynamic in nature, but the resistance because of the, the movement will be slow movement where dynamics will not control. They will not vibrate less uh, compared. But uh, the uh, governing equation for the uh, floating structure will be the uh, two components. Inertial force, which is a dynamics component, is an static component. So the summation of uh, forces, uh, the external force will remain same, the resistance, right? At xt at any time, right? So that because it can move to and fro, right? So, in this, only the elastic force, right? The, the, uh, the globally, the overall condition, which is for elastic force. So, equilibrium condition is static. But in this case, it should be dynamic equilibrium. Whenever Inertial force, which is MA, this X double dash is acceleration, right? X is the deformation. It is moving to and fro, but so that should be complied with the dynamic equilibrium. Right? So that is the global response. which is the 
total force minus the inertial force right so anchor force for floating structure so that is k k x is the the force the static force which is transferring to the uh, here right through this mooring right so right k is the stiffness of mooring line and f minus this will be the elastic component that will be used for the uh, the anchor design right the so force component applied force will be a wave which is wave free so again this is the wind so wind a mean wind speed uh, here mean drift as i said uh, we have every second right so you have every for example at a particular location right uh, every instant every one minute or every five minutes day uh, you are having like every data every uh, measurement it is not the same at a particular time so every month you have Uh, let's say twenty thousand data of the wave for a particular. So you can get month. Mean you can take the monthly mean, statistically yearly mean, or uh, you can go for the probabilistic method. So and the wave frequency. Like wave. from the statistic same thing from the mean uh, and we also need the current data uh, so let's say stationary water no wind no current so this is the uh, stationary position right that will cause the this is the riser this is the mooring line right so that will be the steady mean offset from wind and current right the steady mean right because so why are we concerned about global response so we have to find out this mean offset what should be the maximum or Right? Because this is more critical. If it will go to beyond the permissible, it may cause the leakages. Right? Because riser it will carry leakage. Right? So maximum offset, top tension riser, bending load on at sea floor, steel catenary riser, bending load at sea floor. Right? For that, the it can be offset. Mooring line tension, right? So for this purpose, uh, we have to have the maximum offset, maximum angle, and lateral acceleration, right? So riser bending, right? It can bend if it will. It will also cause flex joint design at the connection to the plate. If it is bending, so the the joint can be cracked. Right, and maximum heave, which means up and down. So riser is stroke. Yes, and riser dynamics loading. Right, so for that purpose, we are required to control the global response of the structure when we are designing. I think this is the repeating. 
So this is just like uh, at software, uh, some example, right? So the wind is being applied at this direction or horizontal. Right? So the amount of forces from the software you can see for any uh, floater model, like it is semi-submersible model. Now, uh, there are also some fundamental, the current force, right? So the current uh, which is circulating, right? So it is circulating effect. So this along the uh, exposed area, there will be some forces, right? So this is the circulating, right? The current forces. Right. So this velocity uh, will cause some uh, force, which is called dragging force. Right. So a small uh, uh, length on dz. Right. The so exposed area is here. So this is the velocity. So this drag force will be right on this small column. So that will be half cd. Shape, right? For circular shape, there will be a different CD. For the for the rectangular shape, there will be different. This and Bz square is this, right? This top. So this is the drag force on this and onto the overall column. So that is the integration. that we can uh, calculate the effects of current forces. The current may cause the drag, right? It will drag the column of so as the drag coefficient, like uh, with uh, Reynold number, for example, right? if you from based on Reynold number, right? They are the function of Reynold number. So this basic fluid mechanics, those have done, right? Current velocity, right, in meter per second, diameter of the column, and kinematic viscosity, usually it, right, so for what? Here square per second. So, for example, if the current velocity is one meter per second, diameter of the column is uh, uh, ten uh, meter. So, uh, the Reynolds number uh, to ten to the power minus six. So, it is ten to the power seven. So, if Reynolds number is this, so the drag coefficient. 10 to the power 7. So that will be the drag. So this is the drag coefficient that CD we can use over here. So this CD. at the velocity, whatever, uh, given to us, every. So if it is uh, a slant position, so by this angle, right, the angle of slant, so we can modify the uh, Inclined slander, the current forces we can modify with this angle, right? So, with cos theta. Drag coefficient shape with for uh, these shapes we can.
So uh, this is so due to the current, these uh, drag forces are being calculated. Uh, drift force, uh, which means and uh, right, the wave, the drift force is the incident wave. Incident wave is the wave which is uh, traveling towards the structure, right? So then it hit, it hit. So because of the mass and area, so that uh, it will transfer the energy. And this energy will cause either it is too rigid and flexible. If flexible, it will cause its moving here. Uh, some waves will be the uh, weak waves, they can be refracted and return back. So, some waves will pass over, which is transmitted because the energy once it strike come in contact, it will come. The importance of wave drift is not the steady load, but the slowly varying wave drift, right? Uh, due to grouping, which can platform in deep water. So deep drift force preserves conservation of momentum. Right? And magnitude is two order of magnitude less than the linear wave. The significant wave height in fit. Right? So uh, this is this graph is giving this is the uh, this so uh, this is the uh, drift force and uh, uh, we can calculate based on the wave height either this uh, time right so these are other graph wave drift particularly So drift motion uh, with uh, zero to two knot current, four knot current, and uh, this is the uh, drift force. So uh, again, it is the function of uh, significant wave height, right? Mean wave drift force. And based on that, we can get the uh, drift uh, right force in here. Right? We can read. So regular, uh, there are two regular versus random seas, irregular seas. So we have motion thing. frequencies right real seas have many frequencies combine the motion by method of superposition what you right the, all what i have taught each of them is a separate subject for offshore engineering so load condition and structural So the load offshore structure shall be designed for the following types of loads. Right? Uh, as I said in general, uh, uh, being a set manager, some understanding and know how to be there. Right? So uh, permanent load, which is the all these fixed objects, is the permanent load, which is the dead load, operating load, right? Which is Operating load, environmental load, which is uh, wind load, wave load, earthquake, right? Construction, installation loads during construction, right? 
an accidental load because so we don't want but if there will be we can consider so we design for that so the design of offshore structure is dominated by environmental load, especially wave load, right? So permanent load is the weight of the structure in air, including the weight of ballast. Ballast weight, either filled uh, this sub tank with water or sand, it is the ballasting, right? So this is being defined by right? weight of equipment and associated structure permanently mounted, right? Which are movable, it is live load, right? Hydrostatic forces on the member hydrostatic pressure. Uh, operating load, live load, include the weight of right? as well as forces generating during operation of equipment. For example, reciprocating, right? So uh, this is the the These living quarters, furniture, life support system, helipad, right? All these forces generated during operation, drilling vessel movement. And following live load values for accommodation according to the standard like DS code or Euro code or API. Right? So well, the live load is 3.2 kN, working area is 8.5 kN per square meter. As well as on any equipment, housing, dairy, and the large equipment. The combination with wave load force recommend the most speed, right? As we say, the wind is very very so you will say for one minute this highest velocity wave and three second gust only wind so together with uh, wave it is this and only wind three seconds and the ratio of height to the least horizontal dimension of the structure is greater than 5, the API RP2A requires the dynamic effects low induced cyclic wind load due to vortex shedding must be investigated, right? So these are the requirements. Again, as I said, this is right, which is not Wave load being of an offshore structure is usually the most important of all the forces on the determination of wave forces required the solution of C state using the idealization of wave surface profile and the wave kinematic wave hydrodynamics is another uh, separate subject computation of the wave forces on individual member and on the total design wave concept is used where a regular wave of given height and period is defined and the forces due to this wave right with uh, because wave theory is another separate subject, but I'm just uh, giving the overview. Usually, the maximum wave with a because the maximum wave height, which is uh, probability that uh, 
99% or 95% in 100 years, it will be the return period. So that is, this is static analysis is appropriate when the dominant wave periods are well above the period of the study. on the shallow water structure. So this is some wave characteristics that when you say this is the mud line. The height of the wave, right? The wave is right. So highest amplitude and uh, A point and the this lowest to highest is the wave height right this is the wave height right and this is the wave length right this is still water so the wave theories describe the kinematic of wave which means it includes the velocity they serve to calculate the particle velocity of the surface elevation of the wave. The wave are assumed to be long crested such that they can be described by a two-dimensional flow field and at the wave depth, right? Which is this wave depth, right? Because uh, which is still water depth. So wave forces on a structure member, the structure exposed to wave, experience forces much higher than the first thing is the density of water is much higher than the density of wind, right? So because uh, MA, so the mass of the water is higher. The result from the dynamic pressure and the water particle motion, two different cases can be large volume bodies termed hydrodynamic. Diffraction uh, and reflection, right? The forces on the bodies have to be determined by calculation based on the diffraction theory. Slender hydro. Uh, dynamically transparent structure have no significant influence on the wave field, right? The forces can be the equation, right? Which is function of velocity. So the steel jacket of offshore structure can be used, uh, be regarded as hydrodynamically transparent structure. As a On L ratio is less than 2, where D is the member diameter and L is the wave height. Morrison equation uh, inertia force uh, proportional to the particle acceleration and a nonlinear drag force. Right? The one I have shown you the drag. So this is earthquake design. I think some brief last semester uh, we have. So there are other like ice load, snow load, marine growth, right? So we can also consider. and installation loop as uh, we are as different configuration so the load will be also uh, changed right so this is the installation position right so the uh, structure like in this position this jacket weight will be 
different. Accidental load while the collision or fire. And that uh, all these category for the global response, we have to combine the load, right? So the there are combination that will give the maximum response, right? That is the worst combination will be that which will give the maximum combine the load. And for analysis, right? So we do this model, some uh, computer model that we can do the right? so this is the finite element modeling, the overall, right? So that uh, applying all such load, we can so like there are uh, many software like SSES and even uh, tailor-made software for the offshore research. Defined by code, so there are uh, like BS code or API code, right? safety factor and all those, so we have to uh, in which the acceptance criteria is given right? so design conditions are three operational survival and so we have to consider the uh, survival condition so these are the list of codes uh, which code standard mostly DNV standard, which is uh, Norwegian API, and there are also BS code of the standard. Yeah. Institute, right? So these are the uh, several codes. So I think that's all, right? Uh, as I said last few. information but again uh, as i said uh, this uh, chapter is basically related to the design which i have and in that the most important thing is the stability where draft or buoyancy or meta center high right some explanation maybe i will also share with you some more example on either whatsapp group or on to that maybe the is there any uh, question so uh, with that we have reached the first part of the course we are basically of the offshore structure as well as the design criteria right we are not designing as i say uh, there will be uh, there is a some know-how is given over there right so uh, if there are any question so the next towards the uh, floater, uh, more detail on each of the floater, like spa, tension lake platform, semi-submersible, like what are the challenges, then uh, maybe next week uh, we will discuss uh, with that at the third week, which is, I think, Secondary topics like pipeline, riser, challenges, decommissioning, so that we can discuss in week three, right? So maybe two tests, right? So if two tests, 
So what we are this we have discussed this week, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, we can take take what we will discuss on Saturday. Uh, we week eight or nine, and uh, what we will discuss next week and week three, we can have test two. Or uh, there is uh, another alternative, we can have one comprehensive test, right? Where the whole syllabus we can merge and we can take in week 11 or week 12 before that, right? So uh, all of you can discuss. So which you want two tests or you want one test, uh, one comprehensive test that can cover. Is there any question? If not, thank you very much. So see you. Okay. Thank you.